Welcome to Cashflow Savannah. Chandler, today we are talking about an incredibly important subject. We are going to talk about short-term rental regulations in Savannah mm -hmm. and also in the state of Georgia. So we've got big, big news to talk about today. But first, how, how the heck are you? What's going on with you and your world? I am doing pretty good. We are starting to pick up springtime. You know how springtime is. It gets, starts to pick up a little bit. Yep. And uh, what we did... Uh, kind of during the downtime, we really started updating, just updating some things. We updated some photos, found an awesome photographer, um, and just started updating some stuff. Some things get moved around, like after a couple, like a year or two, and it's nice to go in there and update some photos and get them back to where they need to be. And it's really helped, I it think. Really helped. Um, there's some properties that were sitting, and all of a sudden you update the photos, and bang. Get a few, get a few bookings. So, um, yeah, that's what we've been doing. Well, obviously, this is a great time for owners to update the properties, you know, because it does slow down a little bit. I mean, it, we still get bookings, but if you're going to lock a property down for a week, um, like we did the undercarriage of one of the properties, you know, where it just was kind of looking a little rough, where it had some holes and stuff. And that's the time to get it done is when you know it's most likely not going to have a guest. And yeah, and that photographer has come through well for us. We've been really trying to up our photo game and photos sell for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. That's It's something that's hard to really, if you don't really look into photos that much, it's hard to notice. But then when you like see like a, a good photographer and then like a really good one, you're like, wow, it's such a big difference. I'm sure it just kind of keeps going up with the more more and more gear they get but yeah photography's big well and i really enjoyed our team you know we've been take we have one person whose job is to kind of highlight the properties that are struggling because this is a market and it goes up and down and we did have a couple of houses that just weren't booking so we started really taking time as a team and looking through the listing very critically because once you've looked at it a hundred times you just don't notice a lot of issues and that's been very that's what kind of led us down the photo game and I've been shocked that one property that had really kind of struggled once we updated the photos and did a few updates on the house. It's been booked solid. It's been great. I'm very thankful. Yeah. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. If don't, don't skimp on the photos. You'll get that money back. Just, uh, just hire the right person. That's right. Well, that's and it seems here we cover the photography as part of, part of our job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't ever want an owner to say, no, 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 I'll take photos. You know, I'm a photographer or I'm a professional or my iPhone is great. We don't <laughs> want that. We're happy for them to add photos in. And in fact, we do have some clients who are photographers and their photos are great, but that's definitely the exception and not the norm. So yeah. we always cover that as a part of our initial setup. And that way we can spend as much money as we want on photos. And we do find the best photographers, the most pleasing filters. And um, we, boy, we see that come back uh, very quickly. The more money you spend on photography and decor, the better that house books. For sure. For sure. So what do you have going on? I know you said you're going to surprise me with some regulation stuff. I'm oh, ready yeah. to hear. I have some good surprises. Well, I wanted to talk real estate sales just for one second. Yeah, um, let's, let's hear it. Things have been really picking up on the real estate side and I'm, I'm happy about that. You know, Savannah, every year it does this November, December, January, February. It's a little slow. And I always say, bye, bye, bye. But that's when no one really wants to buy. And then as soon as March hits, boom. And this year has been no exception. It has followed the exact same trend that it always does. And uh, we had a property here in town. Um, I personally, just me as an agent, wrote nine offers on this one property. Like we're back. We went from nobody's buying to multi-upper situation literally overnight. So um, I've been really telling my clients, you know, we're working on finding them deals. There are still deals, but the deals go fast. You have to be ready. You have to be pre-qualified, you know, and that way when you do find what you want, you go after it immediately. You know, you don't want it to sit, you don't want it to sit long enough to go into that multi-offer situation. So I've really been trying to, you know, encourage my guys like, come on, you know, get in this. If you Analysis paralysis, 
you're going to lose the deal. Like you're wasting your time if it takes you two weeks to decide if you even want to do a showing. So it's been interesting to watch what happens every year has happened again this year, which is nothing. And then nine offers. I want to ask, um, what properties are you seeing that's going quick? The, the ones that are good deals. Um, we have the furnished rental market, which includes medium term and short terminals. You know, we've had a lot of competition come in. So there's, there's quite a bit of inventory on that. And um, the ones that tend to get sold very quickly are the ones that are poorly managed and they're just not making any money. So we're seeing a lot of opportunities now in a mismanagement situation. Uh, and then the agent tells me flat out, I always call what's going on. Oh, you know, it's been mismanaged. They haven't been making anything and now they're selling at a loss. And we hate to hear that, but it's been great for my clients to pick up a great deal and it comes fully furnished a lot of times. It's not every day, but when we identify them, I send it out to my group. I'm like, hey, one, two, three Main Street, fully furnished, turn basically turnkey. There's always something you can do to make it a little nicer. Don't don't get me wrong, but um, that's exciting. You know, when you see that opportunity to come up and it's already furnished, and um, you know, the one that we got under contract, it's a great property. I managed the two next door, so I was very familiar. You are too. Um, and you know, I did tell them, I was like, you know, it needs a couple of new faucets. Like the faucets are older, but I mean, th what's that 60 bucks? Like a, a, a bathroom faucet is not that much. So, um, anyway, it was just kind of exciting to be able to say, Hey, look at this fully furnished mismanaged property. And that's when my people went nets for it. And we had the nine offers, but we're seeing more and more of those. So if you're interested in a short term rental or a medium term rental, and especially something that's very close to, if not completely turnkey, let us know. I'm always watching for those. And that's what I try to get for my clients. So it's been really exciting. Well, cool. Yeah, no, that's what I've been looking at the market. It, it definitely slowed down. You could see, I think the average uh, time homes were on the market in the last couple of months was like 60 days. You're right. It's just continued to go up. And I, I'm assuming it's going to just go down now back to normal. Yeah. The overpriced things are still sitting. I mean, don't get me wrong, but that's what if it's like crazy. if it's reasonably priced, it goes so fast. That's right. If it's like if it's anything like 400, 500, it's just going to sit. But, um, well, and if it's reasonably priced, I've, I've had this look with a couple of properties lately. I'm very happy to say for my clients, it was reasonably priced, but they didn't have other offers, and we still were able to get more off. So they didn't even have to pay for ask. I'm talking Monday, the today we're recording is Wednesday, two days ago, we were getting stuff under contract 10, 15,000 below ask. And that's the beauty of buying on market. You have time to get financing, you can try to get a price reduction if something comes back on the um, inspection report, you might even be able to get more off. So um, on the ones that don't go into the multi-offer, you as the buyer have many advantages if you have a really killer agent. So keep that in mind. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now we can get on to the regulation part. Regulations. Um, I, I know a ton, a ton's been happening here, not in Savannah, but around Savannah. Um, That's right. So... Just for context for our viewer, um, Savannah has had short term rental regulations for probably 30 years. So the historic district is the only place in the city limits where you can have a short term rental. All the certificates are gone. You can, if you do buy in the exact right overlay of the historic district, you can apply for a certificate and it's a three to four year waiting list. So it's, you know, that makes the property with a certificate very valuable. Tybee Island has a very similar program. Um, and so, but if you're in the county, in Chatham County and not in the city limits, you can get a short-term rental certificate. I educate people on this all the time. I actually have a YouTube video on our YouTube that shows you how to identify if the property is in the county outside the city limits. And for people that are looking for, you know, a short-term rental on the outskirts, they can buy it there and get a county uh, short-term certificate. Um, but I, I brought something for you, Chandler, that I don't think at least I wasn't aware of. So I'm assuming that you aren't, but um, I was speaking with someone in Atlanta recently and they sent me an, a news article and I didn't know this, but right now this is kind of exciting. This is Arizona esque. There is actually, um, I'm going to find the article here. There is a, um, a bill before the Georgia Legis legislature that would bar localities from restricting existing short-term rentals. So um, that's very exciting. So if you already, 
have been operating, let's say you have a county certificate or a city certificate, you know, this, this, there's always been a fear that, okay, I do something in the county, Chatham County, not in the city limits, and then Savannah expands over and then they kick you out. That's always been the concern. But if this legislature passes, if you have an existing rental, a short term rental, they won't be able to touch it, which that can be huge for homeowners. Yeah, no, I think that's the, I hope they pass it. I think that's the right thing to do. I, I do. Most, time, most times they grandfather you in anyways, but just having that, that safety net knowing right. it's nice. Well, and you and me as investors, we can't fight a city. You know, they have unlimited pockets like, and that's yeah. always the fear is like, well, if they change the regulations, I know I'm screwed because I can't afford to fight them. Um, and it's nice if they'll pass these state laws, you know, to kind of help out. In Arizona, there's a state law that no municipality can regulate short term rentals. Therefore, you can do it. You can do it anywhere. And Arizona has blown up with short term rentals, and then now it's in the process of shrinking down because they had too many. But mm-hmm. you know, it like let capitalism take its course. And if the home isn't booking, the owner is going to yank it off of Airbnb and and either make it a long term rental or sell it. You know, so that's where kind of capitalism comes in. We don't necessarily need regulations. Um, on these things. Cause there's, it's not like every house in Savannah is going to rent as a short term rental. It's just not. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think we're definitely seeing, I mean, you saw it in Arizona. I think we're even seeing it here. Like some people were just, they made their money and then um, yep. now it's kind of got saturated and the good ones are staying and the bad ones are kind of just getting weird. I feel like that happens with everything. It does. You're right. Well, and short term rentals, you know, it's, you can stay in an Airbnb overnight and, and think that you understand you know, the management of it, but it's very complicated, you know, maintaining the property and it's very difficult. You've got to have a killer on the ground team. You know, you have to know technology, you need to be on multiple platforms. And this is where a professional management company can just be a huge game changer, even though they're going to charge you a fee, they're also most likely going to get higher pricing and have it booked more often than what you can do on your own. Um, And we've seen out-of-state owners saying, oh yeah, I'm just going to self-manage, you know, from wherever uh poughkeepsie you know and it's like that's not an easy it's not as easy as it sounds it's not just about answering airbnb messages it's quite a heavy lift so yes yeah, yeah. owners that's all right. say. and those are the ones we're seeing you know a lot of time get sold yeah. because get tired yeah so. well and once the house drops below a certain level a certain standard you know you have a very hard time getting guests to stay there so you've got to have a local team that's constantly kind of keeping things at a very high level yeah so and the demand's just not as much like georgia was wide open during covid so it was just a yeah wide open state but uh now it's just normal demand normal people like normal even though savannah savannah has way more going on than most like cities like they're just building like crazy cool things are coming here concerts are like once concerts pick up like the in market arena is just i tried to stay downtown when there's a concert it was i was just like i just want to stay down here so i can walk to the arena it's easier to park and all that and you just couldn't find anything like every hotel sold out short-term rental is very very little of them available so Savannah is a good place to do a short-term rental still. I just think you need to do it the right way when you do it. So, Well, and like you said, we have all these events coming. The Civic Center, not the Civic Center, I'm so sorry. The Convention Center will be done in April, right? Yeah. The well, not, mention, not even that. That's not even done. That's so that's going to be even more. So they're now attracting conventions that are twice the size of the conventions they were attracting. And they're already booked for April, you know, through the end of the year. And they haven't even broken ground on the hotel on Hutchinson Island. So, and, you know, they're working on new hotels. We've got mansions shut down right now. We have two uh, commercial uh, office buildings that they're going to convert to hotels, but they, they have not even put in a new hotel here in a long time. So thank God we're able to take on a lot of those leftover um, travelers, you know, so that's kind of exciting. The next few years will be very exciting for the short term rental world here in Savannah. And uh, I think it's, after me trying to like book a place, I was kind of like, I understand this. Like, there's really not enough. Like, cause like, I really was just trying to get a hotel at first because mm-hmm. I didn't need a whole entire house and um, not a hotel to be found. I even like the lower end hotels, and I don't normally, I try to stay away from them, completely booked out. And I was like, what in the world? That's great. 
We love that. We always, yeah. we use the technology to where we know that's coming and we can up our rates those weekends. That's so exciting. So, yeah. well, yeah. you and I have a date next week, sort of a work date, we should say, to clarify, Tuesday, March 19. By the time this podcast launches, we'll have already had our fun in the sun. But okay. the city of Pooler is on the west side of Savannah. I'm a big fan of Pooler. It's a great place to invest. It's right between Savannah and Pembroke and the port. It's just perfectly located. It's on the corner of I-16 and I-95. It's it's like the hub, I think, of and everything else kind of spans out from Pooler. And I personally said, hey, buy in Pooler. You can legally rent there. If you're part of Pooler's in the Savannah city limits, part of it is not. And the part that's not, they don't have HOAs. It's older. Um, but now we're, I'm a little nervous. I've been having to tell my people. Tell us a little bit about what's going on on Tuesday, Chandler. Yeah. So Pooler's having a meeting with, they're talking about what? Regulating short term yes. rentals. Um, so. It was just one bad apple that kind of wants to ruin it for everybody. But yeah, I'm, I've never been to one of these meetings. I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. <laughs> um, I have, and it's awful. These yeah. meetings, and, and it's been, I want to just preface, it's been called because there are some very angry people, like very angry They've had a short term rental in their neighborhood that apparently was managed poorly. And and I don't know what the major offense is, you know, if it was a party. I don't know exactly. I just know that I've seen on the message boards and around, you know, that people are just furious. So the the population is coming together to talk, you know, to tell their lawmakers that they don't want short term rentals. And you and I are on the opposite side, which is going to make it a bit of a party. And I will be speaking. I own homes in Pooler. I manage homes in Pooler. I know what a good job we do. And Chandler, have we had any complaints for neighbors? I can't think of anything. We keep our properties in good shape. I haven't heard anything. Um, We've had a few internet issues, but I don't think that yeah, counts. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a crossroads because like, I want to put myself in the people that live in the neighborhood's shoes. Yes. And be able to do I want like, do I want that? Um, so yeah, it's definitely a crossroads between, but um, I think if you do it the right way, short-term rentals are fine. And it sounds like this one's not being done the right way. Well, and I'm an investor and this is the truth. I, I have a lot of properties in Savannah that are, they're not short-term rentals, they're medium-term rentals, but I purposely have bought the nastiest house in the neighborhood that was definitely a crime scene and it's now gorgeous and we keep it so nice because that's the standard. So I mm. know what a difference short-term rentals make in neighborhoods. You know, like typically your average short-term rental is better than the house next to it because it has to be like the expectation is high. If you're going to charge $200 a night, you know, it needs to be really cute and, and well-kept. I mean, we live and die by the review system. So um, I think truly that short-term rentals can be an asset. I just understand the fact that too many are not. When Tybee passed the regulations, I got it and I didn't, I wasn't upset about it because Tybee Island is a beautiful neighborhood community. People know each other well. It's like 4,000 houses and they hit their cap of 20% short term rentals and they said no more. And I said, I agree. Let's keep it a great place to live, but it's also very clearly a vacation market as well. Yeah. No, I kind of, What's your going to, like, what is your, is your stance going to be, hey, I, I come in and make neighborhoods a little bit nicer? Like, what's your stance on it when you go to this meeting? That's a good plan. That's a good question. I need a plan. Um, I, I just wanted to, you know, at least be someone that says something positive. And I want to say truthfully that I own and manage mine in the area and we've had zero complaints, you know, and that we're very proud of the work that we're doing. And, you know, I don't, really believe in the concept of, you know, being upset with maybe one property or two and then throwing the book at hundreds other hundreds of other ones. Like this is America. And I mean, we're here because it's the land of the free. And I'm very offended by someone telling me what I can do with my own property. Um, I this property that I bought in Rankin years ago and I who oh, I went through this, boy, I got screamed at, at at these meetings because I was the person, you know, changing things around. But I said, honestly, we're going to do a good job here for this community. I have bought a disgusting house, you know, that we plan to make into a nice, we turned it into commercial. It wasn't a short-term rental, but 
um, you know, that's how I actually won the argument. I, I, there were, it was my husband and myself against a lot of 80 year olds, like more than 20 and they were furious and we still won because that's, we said that we said, this is our property. Had you wanted to, you know, the house was for sale for probably a year and a half. And had you wanted to control it, you should have bought it yourself. And the, yeah. the constituency said that as well. They said, it, you know, the person that owns the property has a lot of rights here and y'all could have bought it. You know, you didn't. So for you to come in and tell me what to do. And this property happened to be on a six lane highway, six lane highway, not a little dirt road. And I, I also said, you know, it's really not appropriate to have children and pets living on this massive, busy road. So, you know, amazingly it worked out. So we'll see what happens. Um, I I definitely will be trying to respond to stuff that I disagree with. That's kind of my plan. I don't know what's going to be said. Um, but on Tybee, you know, when they added the regulations, the biggest thing was that they wanted um, it listed. There's You have to have a sign on the property and it has to state the name of uh, the who's managing it and their phone number. And then the neighbors can know who to call because that was a big issue on Tybee was and, and please Tybee and Pooler are total different planets. But, you know, people were going with large groups, they're partying, they're making noise and someone's living right next door. And I and I get it. And this can apply to any town, but that's what was happening. And yeah. so they said, we want these regulations. We want to know who to call and we don't want more. We're, we're OK with what's here now. We just don't want more. And I said, you know, I, I think it's fair. The beautiful thing for the owners that I had personally gotten certificates for several people who had never rented out their houses and we had been, you know, managing them. And I told them, I said, your house is now worth 30% what, what it was before these regulations. And that's huge for that homeowner. So in a way, I guess if they pass regulations in Pooler, maybe I'll do okay on my properties just because they're already functioning. But I don't know. I don't know what's yeah. going to happen. I think if they grandfather you in, it's kind of a good thing because I guess an analogy I would use is like everybody wants something they can't have. So like the reason Ferraris and Lamborghinis are so much more is because there's only so many of them made and they just continue to go up in value because there's only so many of them. They're not just making as many as they want. So I think, some people get really scared of regulations, which I can understand if it's like, we're going to take it away from you, which I hope they don't. I don't, I don't think that'd be the right decision, but sometimes regulation can be in favor for yourself. So, right. Well, and I've learned a long time ago to stress out about what I can control and yeah. if I can't control it. I got to let it go. So I'm going to go. I want to see what happens. I want to see what the issues are and you know what the next steps are. I want to have a voice, but ultimately I can't control what the city of Pooler does. I know you can't either. I really, for, for both of us, it's probably just going to be a big learning opportunity. Um, but I am going to stand up for what I believe. And I am going to say that I'm proud of what I'm doing. And, you know, some, I, I have a right to talk to is how I see it. So I will. Um, and we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Cause I, some people don't understand. Some people just don't even understand what's going on with short-term rentals and a lot of our houses, we're supplying houses for people to go work down the street, not, not to party. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. I don't care for drama that much, but, um, I'll sit back and be entertained for a couple of hours. <laughs> You're going to have some stories after this one. I promise you this is, yeah. If it's anything like what happened in Rinkin, it's a lot of drama and screaming and, you know, I don't know if I'll get stoned or something, but it was, I was honestly in Rinkin at one, I had to go to three meetings total. And the, the second one, or I guess it was the third one when they actually said that they were going to grant us to move it to commercial. I was scared to go to my car. I like sat in there for a while <laughs> until they left. I just didn't, you no, know, like the courtroom, there were police there and you feel a little bit more secure yeah. Like, I'm just going to let them move on and then I'll go to my car. I don't know. I just, I knew they all were mad, but now I'm friends with all of those people, ironically. So it worked out. They saw the wisdom later. That place makes sense. Like it only makes sense to be commercial. Yeah. But, yeah. No, we'll see. I think, I think as long as they just either grandfather everybody in or cause I don't know it's kind of hard to stop the, the party and people, you know, like, I don't understand. 
it's kind of hard to stop that aspect of it. You have it. We've even had that though. I mean, no, I know. It's, I mean, I don't see anybody come. I don't know why somebody's going to come to pool or and just party. Right. Like Tabby, Tabby makes sense. Like that's people are on vacation. They come to drink on the beach, and then when they get home, they drink some more. And Tabby's a party town. Like it just, it's all they do on Tabby. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, but. Yeah, I hope they just keep it. But I think with you especially, you learn to adapt and right. figure it out. You know? Well, and everything in my portfolio, I have bought because it works as a long-term rental. And I can't say that strongly enough. Like, just because you're doing really well in something today, you might have crypto today and it's killing it. And next week, it might be in the toilet. You know, like, that's any investment. You yeah. understand it's going to go up and it's going to go down and nothing is going to stay the same. If you think that just because it's making three grand a month right now, that it's going to make three grand a month forever. I'm here to tell you, I, I don't think so. You know, I've been through a lot of highs and lows and I'm aware of that. And I, I get it. And that's why I buy appropriately, appropriately from the beginning. And I know if something happens, I can yank the furniture out. I can rent it long term and I'm still going to cash flow very nicely. Um, so just be careful if you're buying a property that can only work as a short term rental, and there are no regulations in place, like the historic district of Savannah, they're not going to pull those certificates. Those are, they've been there forever. That's a solid investment. I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm saying if you're buying in the county and, but it has to be short term rented for it to cash flow, I worry for you because we don't know what's going to happen in two years, 10 years. You know, we just don't know. And so this is a really great example. Pooler has been unregulated this whole time. Not a whole lot of people put short term rentals there. But everything we manage there does very well. I've been steering my clients that way. Um, but these regulations can really make some changes for sure. Does super well. So, yeah, no, I'm excited to see. And um, I wouldn't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll we'll report back yes. about that. I think, you know, let's record an episode right after the meeting when it's all fresh <laughs> and we're still traumatized. Uh, we'll record another episode and just let everyone know kind of what happened because this affects all of us. If you're listening to this podcast, you're interested in investing in Savannah and short term rentals are in medium term rentals, you know, are a great way to do it, among others. So we're definitely going to report back. We're here. We live here. We know this market. We manage here. We're going to be a part of this. Whether we win or lose, we're going to be a part of it. And um, I will always speak up for what I think is right. And that's my plan. And we'll just. We'll see what's, what your, what's your gut feeling? What do you think is going to happen? I think they're going to institute some kind of regulations in, in the yeah. city floor. That's what I think. Okay. We'll see. I don't know. You understand they've got county certificates right now. There are people with a license to do it through Chatham County and that can't be ignored. So I don't know what they do. I'm not in government. Thank God. Yeah. I'm in government. <laughs> but you've got people that are, have no certificate. You have people that have a county certificate, but the city of Pooler does have the right, you know, to make their own laws. So I don't, I honestly have no clue. I know there's a lot of angry people and there are going to be a few investors there. We'll have some friends there, Chandler, <laughs> but um, it'll, it'll be like it being at the wedding, you know, where the bride is really popular and the groom is really hated and everybody sits on the bride side. That's how I picture it is like you and me and a couple of people will be like, let's stick Maybe. together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate the listeners for coming on and listening to today's episode. We will definitely report back. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll plan a meeting right after the meeting and um, we'll let y'all know how it goes. I'm super interested and we'll see if pool is still a good place to invest because I think it's an awesome place to invest right well, now. If you and me are missing a tooth or we have an arm in a sling or something, I guess our viewers will know that uh, it didn't go so well for us. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully not. So, but yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate y'all listening and we will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.